I thank God for the privilege and the honor to stand before his people on tonight. Know that I'm not standing up in self, I'm standing up in him. And I give him the glory, the honor, and the praise. You may be seated. As I said, in my point at time, seeking the Lord, God, what do your people need? And I'm telling you, when God spoke, this is the first time that I've heard God speak the way that he spoke to me. It was like the sound of thunder. And I remember sitting there and I shook myself. And I said, God, what in, what in the world? And God just kept speaking it. And I found myself saying, God, if you say it, I'll say it. So tonight, the word for the house is, mm, my God, thank you, Jesus. God said, take up them. I want to remind them. Yeah. How many know God will remind us? God said, remind them that I, the Lord thou God, created you to be you. And I said, what? God said, remind my people that I created you to be you. And I said, okay, God. And then he began to say, my people are trying to be something that I haven't created them to be. Then I understood why God said what he said. And how many know, <laughs> even there are times when the doctor or the dentist office, yeah, will remind you of an appointment. Yeah, so you won't miss it. Now, I don't know about you. I'm just fickle when it comes to that. I've been told, saying, put it on a sticky note. Well, I haven't done that yet. And then Gail, uh, Sister Farmer, said you got something on your phone that you can put all your apartments on your phone. Well, I haven't done that either. So what I'm finding is happening to me, sometimes I forget appointments. Even though they called me the day before to remind me of an appointment for some reason, I don't always make the appointment. So God is saying to me, I remind my people. Remind my people that I created you to be you. Thank you, God. That thing I'm telling you resonated in my spirit. And I said, God, why wouldn't we be what you have created us to be? And sometimes it's because we think that God will use somebody else better than he used us. Come on, y'all, let's be transparent on tonight. And we get all up in our heads and all up in our emotions. And then we stop being who God has created us to be. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I bless you for this assignment tonight. I thank you, God, that your people earls will be open. Their hearts will receive it in the mighty name of Jesus. And I come against every spirit that will try to get them not to focus. God, don't let them see me. But let them see you through me. God, don't let them hear me. But let them hear you speaking through me. <laughs> God, tonight you will be glorified. The people will be edified. And the devil will be terrified. Put those hands 
together if you in agreement with that prayer. Now, when God gave me this, of course, he took me back to the beginning. I'm going to come out of Genesis 1, 26, 27. The King James Version says, And God said, Let us make man in our image. There was a council within the Godhead, the Trinity, the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And it said, After our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. The 27th said, So God created man in his image and after his likeness. Mm -hmm. In the image of God created he, him, male, and female, God created them. Now, I looked up create, and it said, listen to this, to cause to come into being as something unique that would not naturally involve or that is not made by, listen, ordinary process. Ha. To evolve from one's own thought or imaginations. Right there lets me know that God put a lot of thought before he created you. God did not, he didn't invent you. He didn't mimic you. You were not cloned. You were not duplicated. You were not produced. Come on, y'all. God didn't carve you. He didn't create you with any malfunctions. He didn't even throw you together. Look at God. He didn't leave anything out of you. And then he didn't create you to, to be a wannabe. But the thing that got me, God did not create you to be a copycat. Hear what God is saying on tonight. God did not create you to be a copycat. Listen, with the rest of creation, God has simply spoke things into existence. That's according to Genesis 1 3. But God did something differently when He created us. Ah! Genesis 2 and 7 said, Then the Lord God formed man out of dust. Can anything good come out of dust? Yes, it can because we did it. Dust. God created us out of dust. My God. God mm, from the ground and then look what he did. He breathed into our nostrils the breath of life and man became a living being. Now you think about it the next time you inhale. Mm -hmm. Know that you inhaled the breath of God. Oh my God. Don't take it lightly. Yeah, he said he breathed breath into our nostrils and we became a living being. I'm saying to you on tonight, don't you let nobody sniff the breath out of you. My God, my God. Ex inhale, exhale. God Almighty. That's what God said. Remind them. I created you to be you. Don't get it twisted. Man didn't have his hand in this thing. God did it. And I like the fact that earlier that that was some things that God spoke into existence but look at God he wanted to put his hands in this thing my God God got his hands on in it yeah I'm telling you people of God don't you dare let people even try to create what God have created you finna get all jacked up and messed up because God didn't make no mistake when he created you. Yeah, yeah. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Yeah. Ah, uh, thank you, God. He didn't create you to be a counterfeit. Baby, you are the original thing. Ah, uh, bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Psalms 139 
and 14 says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully there you go. And wonderfully many. Oh, somebody know. Now, I like the way the message Bible puts it. You shake me inside, then out. <laughs> you form me in my mother's womb. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. Stop complaining if you're big boned and tough. God know every bone in your body. My Maybe for you to carry something, somebody with a small bone can't carry. The word of God said, he know every bone in my body. He know exactly how I was made look bit by bit. Good God Almighty. Thank you, God. Look at God. Nobody can do that but God. God created you to be you. My, my. Thank you, God. God created man in his own image. Then I looked at the word image. Yeah, it suggests something visible. See, a camera capture in an image for living to be seen within the physical eye. Pictures or graphics in a computer format are often called digital image. Mm -hmm. They got all different kinds, and, and sometimes I have some to send me different images on my job, and if I don't have the software, I can't even download the image. So then I have to go in and export it. Yeah. Talk about image. God created us in his image, and then after his life. But this is not the image spoken of in Genesis 1.27. In this content, we move beyond the simple vision similarity. The image is real, but not necessary or primarily visible. The word image in Genesis 1.27 means uh, likeness and resemblance. Who look at that. Uh, you ought to be in the likeness of God. And even resemble him. You ought to go to the mirror. And when you look in the mirror, you ought to see God all up in you. Ah, thank you, God. He created you to be you. What better person than to be you than you? Can't nobody be better than to you than you. Come on now. You were created in his image. Thank you, Daddy. And after his likeness, listen to this. We are like God. Get this. We are not God. He made us in his image, and we must not attempt to make him in our image. Don't you mess up now. Yeah. Don't try to make God in your image. You feel about to have a head on collision. My God, this does not mean that God is in human form, but brother, that God is in the image of God in his moral, spiritual, and intellectual nature. God created us not to be a copycat. Then I looked up the word copycat. I did a lot of looking, I'm telling you. And it said, a copycat, listen to this, Lack original ideals. My God. One who intentionally imitates or adopts the behavior or practice of another. I said, my God. Then I read something that said, uh, uh, when a tailor at a bank, mm -hmm. when they have, when, when a manager at a bank how a tailor, well, I didn't know this. It said, in training them, mm -hmm, they would give them the original, in my thinking, well, why wouldn't they train them to, to, to be able to look at, yeah, a dollar bill that's phony, not the real thing. But it said they trained them to study. The original and not the copy. I 
said, my God. So, what are we doing? Mimicking and spelling the copy rather than the real thing? That's the way they trained them. Then I thought about another example. And when, when you take an original picture, I don't care how good or who you take it to, and you want them to copy that picture, baby, don't you fool yourself. I don't know how much you paying them, but that copy ain't going to look like the original. It's a copy. Yeah. Yeah. I remember her. I don't know, I'm telling my age, but it's all good. Mm. When we had a family portrait, and it was when Davis was downtown and they was known for being the best popular. Yeah, yeah. And if anybody go back, it, it was a man by the name of um, Howard. Can you think of his last name? But he had done our family portrait. And we took it down there. Let me shit tell you. He took it out the frame and on the back it said, Cannot be copied. Mm. That's what's written on some of you. Can't be copied. My God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. A copycat is a poor imitation of what God wants to do in you and through you. Verse 1 and 6 said, being confident of this very thing, he who has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. With my question for you, are you delaying the good work that God is doing in you because you're so busy copying somebody else? And you don't understand yeah, why God ain't moving because mm, you're delaying the process. Instead of being the original that you are, you're spending and wasting time copying and mimicking somebody else. The word of God said the good work he began in you. My God. Have you ever made a photocopy of a printed piece of paper? Do you not know you make a copy? Mm -hmm. You make another copy? Mm -hmm. You make another copy? How you got is a copy. It would never be like the original. Why wouldn't we want to be who God created us to be? Why do we feel like uh, God has put more in him than he put in you? As Paul wrote to the Corinthians, to the church in Rome, God's plan is for you to be, listen to this, conform to the image of his son. That's the word of God. He didn't say we are to conform to grandmama. Now, grandmama could be a, a good old woman, but he didn't tell you to confirm to grandmama. Or even to mama. Be conformed to the image of his son. My God, my God. Mm. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Mm. Romans 8, 29. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. Have you ever thought about this? Satan is not an originator. He has no capacity to create anything or bring forth anything new. So what do he do? <laughs> Everything that God has created, Satan has an imitation of it and hope he can listen, fool people to accept this as the real thing. But the word of God tells me in 7 Corinthians 2 and 11, uh -huh, that Satan should get an advantage of us. For we are not ignorant to his devices. We ought to be able, we ought to be so sensitive to the Holy Spirit that we can all oh, thank you, God. We can focus in. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. When it ain't real and when it is. And that comes when you spend time in God's presence. When you keep your mouth to the ear of God, you ought to be able to pick up on a phony spirit in a drop of a hat. My God, it ought not to take you two and three weeks to go and 
the Father that you can pick up on that. Uh, oh, thank you, Jesus. Uh, just like you can pick up on them, let me twist this around. They can pick up on you. That thing goes both ways. Listen to this. A cat meow, meow, and a lion roar. God wants the people to hear the more that's on the inside of your belly. Because a cat don't move you like a lion would. My God, my God. When you copy someone else, listen, you are suggesting that God read out of ideals. Now you put that in your pipe and smoke it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you copy somebody else, you telling God you read out of ideals when it came to me. So I just think, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, we might need to repent. Copying others is an insult to God. There is nothing wrong with being inspired by another man or woman of God. But don't imitate their calling. Discover your divine purpose. If we all did the same thing, listen to this, we could only reach a small margin of people. <laughs> Copying others mm -hmm, makes the devil job easier. Did y'all know that? Why young? Because he has only one less mission to stop. You ain't giving him no work. Because we too busy copying in each other. If someone chooses to copy instead of tap into their own calling, they have already aborted their assignment. Mm. Isn't that something? Yeah. That comes from having a copycat spirit. When you sacrifice your identity, mm, you satisfy the enemy. When you embrace your identity, look at here, you petrify the enemy. My God. We are called to imitate Jesus' attributes. What do we imitate? Holiness, righteousness, justice, goodness, love. Oh, jump on in here. Mercy, compassion, uh, tenderness, uh, long suffering, uh, loving. Uh, Faithful and forgiveness. Ephesians 5 and 1 said, Be imitators of God, therefore, as dearly beloved children. Man can create, man was created in the image of God. Listen to this to reflect God. Are we reflecting God? We were created in the image of God. To reflect God. By drawing close to him, knowing him, his voice, his character, and his will. Seeking to be like him and being obedient to him. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. God created you. There are some times that God will, okay, well God will even give us mentors. I'm not fighting mentors, but I say this to you. You got to seek God before you seek a mentor as to who he wants to mentor you. Now y'all hear God clearly. Don't just jump, jump on the bandwagon because Sister Sue and, and Sister Lulu got this one or that one for a mentor. You got to make sure that's who God wants to mentor you. See, a mentor is someone who has it. Has sight can become your foresight. Y'all heard what God said. Hallelujah. So here I go again, just searching. I said, okay, God, you're talking about a mentor. I, I found that Jeffro 
mentor Moses. Is that right? Exodus 18, 20. I believe Jephro was telling Moses to help the people, listen to this, understand the vision. That's what a mentor do. A mentor don't tear down the vision. Y'all better be careful who you got mentoring you. You don't let a mentor, you don't sit under a mentor when God has given the vision to the man of the house. Yeah. God has charged him to bring forth the vision. How dare you sit under somebody that called themselves a mentor that's going to tell you to come against the vision. You miss God. You miss God and I won't take that back. Be mindful, Jephro mentored Moses. Uh, then Moses, uh, he mentored Joshua. Yeah. My God, uh, it said that Moses laid his hands on Joshua, filling him with the spirit of wisdom to lead Israel's people. Deuteronomy the 34, it didn't say he laid hands on him and told him, follow my wisdom. No, 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 that's not what he said. The Bible says, that lack wisdom. Now tell me what it says. Oh, I think you got it. So why are we getting all jacked up going to in and everybody asking them for wisdom when God said any man that lacks wisdom let him ask of me and I will give it to him. I'm ready not. Come on y'all. My God, my God. Then there was Elijah. Yeah, Elijah. He, yeah, yeah, yeah. He meant to Elijah created a safe place for Samuel to obey, exposing the role of the prophet. Y'all know the story how Elijah, how Samuel kept going back to, uh, uh, how Samuel kept going back to Elijah. When he heard a voice, he didn't understand. And Elijah told him, said, Samuel, that ain't me. He said, the next time you go back, said, Lord, the servant here. Come on down. That's what he, my God, you better be careful her. who you let mentor you. You better make sure that God has told them for you to sit under them as a mentor. Bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. God created you to be you. Yeah. God created. He put his hands in that thing. Who look at God? He created you, woman of God, to be you. My brother, he created you, man of God, to be you. And we bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Anybody in here that's in community one, stand on your feet. Community one, stand on your feet. Now what I'm instructed to tell community one to do, open up your mouth and give God some praises up. Come on, come on, come on. Community three out of your mouth. 
by today's message and have decided to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, or you want to be reconciled in your relationship with the Lord, please feel free to contact us by either sending a message through Facebook or going to our website, firstwalltown.org. You will find contact information on the link in the upper right-hand corner. Be blessed.